Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from beautiful Costa Rica. This evening's topic is going to be when they know you know. Think about that for a minute. Guys, if you like the content, please subscribe. So, you were in a narcissistic relationship, no matter what kind it was, or maybe you're still in one. Maybe you work with some narcissists, maybe they're family members, friends, maybe you're in a marriage. The thing is, over time, eventually, you will stumble across my channel and many other channels similar to mine and you will get the education. You will have the answers to all the questions you've been wondering for possibly decades. Certainly for the duration of the relationship, wondering what was going on with that person we're, we're discussing who turns out to be a narcissist. Bear in mind, you did not have the education on narcissism. You're not taught this in schools, which of course is my moonshot to do so and raise awareness at the high school level. But the point is, is narcissism, it's not something that people just they, they pick up a book or, or read about it or watch a YouTube video unless they have a real reason to educate themselves, which means they're most likely in a narcissistic relationship. They wonder if their partner or whoever they're talking about is healthy, what's wrong with them. Maybe they're, they're figuring out that the way they're being treated is completely inaccurate and they stumble across something else, another category or topic that leads them to narcissism and then boom, light bulb moment. I'm willing to guess that most people here on the channel, that's exactly how they discovered what narcissism is and that narcissists do exist on this planet. I'm also willing to guess that most people on this channel, and again, thank you very much for being here, were not taught this in school. They didn't have the education. They just thought that their uncle was just a little bit different or that their partner just had mood swings or that their brother, or sister, you know, they were just treated a little bit different, things like that. They, they, I can't say they downplayed it, but they put up with it, they tolerated it. Because bear in mind, the education has only come to, to light recently, relatively re recently. I would say you, we could probably go back in time, actually I should do this and figure out what the first narcissistic channel was on YouTube, but whoever that was, God bless you, you open up a lot of eyes and you open up a lot of doors for people such as myself to educate even more. So, I want to say a few things. When, when you know, when they know that you know, this is, a, this is the moment that the narcissist has been dreading, has been fearing, has been anguishing, has been hoping that never came to light. This is the day that the narcissist realizes it's game over. They no longer have that cloak, that dagger, that mask, that power, the control, the ability to manipulate. All of this is gone. So let's picture like in the Wizard of Oz, if I'm not mistaken, the Wicked Witch of the West. I think she was a green witch, I'm not sure. And they, to, to get rid of her, they had to pour water on her and then she's like, I'm melting, I'm melting. Remember that? If you didn't, you should check that scene out. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Point is, that's essentially what a narcissist is. Now we don't pour water on them and they melt, but once we get the education, which in this case is a metaphor for the water, they have zero control over us, nothing. Specifically, if you were in a, uh, in a, in a uh, romantic relationship, once, once, you get the, once you get the toxicity out of you and you get over the trauma bond, as an example, it's game over. That's when, that's when the, the light switch turns on for you and for everybody on the channel. And that's when we become educated, enlightened, and empowered. You see, the narcissist never wanted you to figure out that they were a narcissist. They didn't want to be revealed. That's why many times the narcissist only has short-term relationships in many capacities. They only have a few friends around them uh, that are constant because they're always changing the people around them. And this includes family members, moms, dads, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, business associates, you name it. It includes all of the above and every other person on this planet. Because the narcissist, you see, they can only get along with their games and their tricks and their manipulation and destruction and devastation and selfishness so long before people wise up and they say, I don't want to be treated this way. I, I really don't care if I marry them. I don't care if it's my brother or sister. I don't care if it's my mom. I, I don't deserve this. And each and every day around the world, people are becoming awakened and aware and they're saying to themselves, yes, I still love this person. Maybe it's your brother or sister, let's say. I still love this person, but I can't do this any longer. So I'm going to need to close the chapter on, on them. Like in other words, go no contact block, maybe, maybe just move whatever they need to do but they're not gonna to tolerate the nonsense any longer. And you may say, why would they do that, Andrew? Well, first of all, you should know the answer to that if you're on the channel, because a narcissistic abusive relationship is unlike any relationship you'll ever experience in your life. But second of all, because 
they, the person that I'm referring to, as an example, they deserve to live a beautiful, bright life. They deserve to be drama free. They deserve to have the attention and the spotlight put on them. They deserve to do what they want, when they want, without even thinking for a moment that someone else will ruin their special day or their time, or maybe just their peace of mind. Remember, that's what the narcissist wants. They want attention, control. They need to feel special. They need to feel validated each and every day, each and every hour. That is exactly why the narcissist is afraid of being exposed. And this video is not about being exposed. It's about when they know that you know. The, the, the same thing that we discuss in the channel frequently is once you get the education as to what narcissism is, and once you identify it, that it, it possibly could surround you. I'm not saying it does, but let's be real. If you go back in time, I'm sure you can come up with some people that you just, you pegged them to have you know, poor behavior or something wasn't quite right, and now the light bulb's probably going off in your head right now, and you're saying, Andrew, oh my gosh, light bulb moment. Ding, 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 things like that. That's when you understand, you're like, oh my gosh, like this, I was trying so hard to be that person's friend. I was, too, I was doing so many things, staying up till four in the morning, listening to them. I was talking on the phone with them when no one else would. I did all these things. What you were doing, if these people in fact were narcissists, is you were just playing into their game. They just needed a source of supply. They needed someone, they needed a sounding board. They needed someone to validate them, to make them feel alive. And in those situations, it was most likely you. Now, bear in mind, I'm sure there were many times you comforted people on the planet and helped them out and were there for them and brought them chicken soup when they were sick and things like that. And I'm not saying that everyone's a narcissist, not even close. What I'm saying is if you really dig back into time, if you want to, personally, I won't be doing that, but if you want to, just think about some of the relationships you had, high school, college, whatever, and, and think about these people, like were they, essentially, were they healthy? Or was it just, oh, that, it, that's just so-and-so, they're always like that, don't, just forget about them. Well, when you hear something like that, what I just mentioned, that's called an enabler, enabling the narcissist to continue to be a narcissist. And guess what? That's who the narcissist surrounds themselves with, enablers, people that allow poor behavior, people that tolerate it, people that put up with it, people that actually, at times, as disgusting as this is, they, they may think it's funny. It's not. It's never been funny. It's insidious, cruel, manipulating, disgusting, deceitful, devious, destructive. It's abhorrible. But getting back on track, the narcissist, they never wanted you to know. They really didn't. It was their secret. That's why they kept so many secrets. By the way, I should do a video on that, on the secrets the narcissist keeps. But that's why the narcissist keeps so many secrets. They keep them from you. They keep them from everybody. That's why they have little bubbles of groupies, little bubbles of friends, and they won't let you in that one little bubble. Or that other bubble is just, oh no, they're not for you. You, may, you won't get along, whatever. They like to isolate, separate. In war, like in war times, it's called divide and conquer. Look up that term. That's what the narcissist does. That's what they do in families, in relationships, friendships, business, you name it. They divide and conquer. Now, is that a good thing? No, because first of all, we shouldn't be having wars in this planet. I sincerely wish, my hope is one day they do get eradicated. I really sincerely do. There's no reason for war, because all it is is over greed and money and land. It's religion too, fair enough. Okay, but that's about it. And yes, religion's very important, I understand. But what I'm saying is that's what the narcissist does. And they, if you notice, they all play from the same playbook. They all do the same manipulating things. And they all act innocent. Oh, I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. Really? What happened? Or, or they just it gaslight you, say, that didn't happen. That, that, that didn't happen that way. It wasn't like that. Or here's a classic. They stonewall you, which means they're just going to go radio silent on you and act like, basically, when they're going stonewalling you, pretend it's an eight-year-old child and they're holding their breath because they just, they're like, I'm not listening to you, and you know, they put their ears, their hands over their ears and holding their breath like, you know, uh, that's, what the, that's what the narcissist does. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it's what they do. Bear in mind, the narcissist cannot, and I repeat, cannot have a healthy, engaging conversation. There is no such thing as introspection, there's no such thing as accountability, and there's no such thing as, I was wrong. You're right, I apologize, my fault, won't do it again. And these are some of the classic signs. If you hear of any of these things frequently from another person, Pay attention, could be a narcissist. The whole point is they didn't want you to figure this out because they wanted to keep you around as long as you possibly would tolerate their poor behavior, their mistreatment of you, their abuse, and all of the insidious things that they, they do to people. Because why? Because you most likely were a top shelf, grade A source of supply who could tolerate it. You were an empath, sorry, are an empath, and you wanted to work on yourself and work on the relationship and work on and growing together. and You didn't want to quit. You see, that's the whole difference between this narcissist and the empath. And it doesn't, you don't have to be an empath, by the way. 
to be with a narcissist, not even close, but I'm mentioning most likely you are one because you're on the channel. But think about this, the narcissist, they're just flat out evil and they don't care. They play by any rule they want to. There essentially are no rules for the narcissist and they're constantly changing. They're a shapeshifter. Whatever they say in any given moment is exactly how they feel and that's what they're gonna do, most likely, or manipulate you. And any validity to your side of the story is just gonna be expunged. It doesn't exist. Who are you? You're nobody. You're here to offer me supply. You're here to give me exactly what I need to validate myself. But guys, when we figure this out, and that's the good side, by the way, it's good and evil. And when we, when we figure out, to get the, when we get the education about narcissistic uh, abuse and the narcissistic abuse of cycle, what we do is we immediately, 99.99% .99 of the time, if you're on this channel, what you've done is you've dug your heels in. You've dug deep into exactly what narcissism is. You're getting the education and the empowerment from the channel and many others, and you don't want to quit. Just like you didn't want to quit in that relationship, maybe on your brother or sister or loved one, whoever it was, neighbor, but you eventually said, no, uh -uh, I'm out, I'm done. And when you did that, the light bulb went off, you figured it out, it landed on my channel and here you are. The thing is this, you're gonna to continue to get education for the rest of your, of your life, most likely. And you will have light bulb moments throughout it. And that's a good thing, it really is. But my, my point of this video is when the narcissist, that when they know that you know, they're gonna disappear like a cockroach in the kitchen at night when you turn the light switch on. They will. And you notice it, they will. And if you call them out, which I suggest strongly you don't, I really would never do that. But if you, if you, if you, you can tell when you, when you look at someone or talk to them or just, you know, if they're in a good mood, not a good mood, or if you should do things or not, the narcissist, they're going to be gone. Eventually they will be gone if they're not already. Once they know that you know, and that's most likely why you're not getting a Hoover. And that's most likely why they're abusing somebody else right now, which again, we don't like, but it's not you. The narcissist number one, and I did a series, a 10 part series on this, but the, the, one of the narcissist's number one uh, fears is abandonment, being exposed, or having, when you figure out who they are. And when you figure it out, it sincerely validates every single thing you've been thinking for years, for decades, about the relationship. Was it me, was it my fault? Did I do something wrong? Well, what, what's going on here? It wasn't you. You are working your tail off, giving everything you have. Your beauty, your looks, your energy, your kindness, your love, your empathy, your finances, your resources, your house, your home, your job, your circle of friends, everything I mentioned on the channel, you gave to a fault. And eventually, you said, you know what? No, uh, something's gotta give here, most likely. And when it did, maybe you were discarded because you were wising up. And the narcissist could sense that. And they're like, oh no, here we go again. I've gotta discard this person, find a new source of supply, which I have many in the background but this one's no good anymore. Doesn't have the supply I need and actually they're getting smart. That's exactly one of the ways the narcissist thinks. The other ways they discard you just because they have backup supply, but I wanna stay on track. When they know that you know, it's game over. It's empowerment for you and don't feel like you need to do anything about it because you don't. You should take solace in knowing that you understand what narcissism is, that you were with a narcissist and you have the education. Remember this before I close the video, with, if you're a superhero, which you are, and you are, with great, with great power comes great, great responsibility. I think Spider-Man said that, or Superman, I forget, one of those great superheroes. And remember, with those of us that have gone through the fire or are going through the fire right now, that's us. That's not a metaphor, that's real life. You are a superhero, you have the superpower. You can do what you want with it. Are you gonna use it for good, or are you gonna not use it at all? You're gonna use it for good, but you don't need to tell the narcissist that you know, is my whole point. Get it? Some things are better left off unsaid, uh, unsaid whatever that expression is. But that's the video, guys. I want to let you know, when, when they know that you know, that's when the tide turns, that's when the game is over, that's when you have control, that's when you actually, you're, you just feel, if, you just feel relieved. At the same time, you're disgusted if it, if, it's, if it just happened to you like today or something, but you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And you'll process all of that and I'm not downplaying it what's, one bit. I'm just letting you know, like once you're on the healing path, like let's say my time frame or you're months away and you're, pro you're healing and processing things, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness. But you're gonna feel so empowered. So I wanna let you know that. I love you all, God bless you. I hope you liked the video. I loved doing it from beautiful Costa Rica. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great evening. I am going to meditate again and enjoy the rest of my Costa Rican evening. Have a great, blessed evening. I will talk to you in the morning. Remember guys, this is your superpower. Use it wisely, be smart. I love you, God bless you, bye.